I wish I'd had the courage to live a life more true to me rather than the life others expected of me. I wish I hadn't worked so hard. I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. I wish I'd stayed in touch with my friends. I wish I'd let myself be happier. These are the most common regrets of people who are dying. When Stephanie Danger entered my consciousness, I immediately fell in love with her. She was my opportunity to avoid regret number one, living a life others expected of me rather than a life more true to me. Ooh, but that second regret, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. Hmm. Yeah, that one scares me. If I die tomorrow, that would be my number one regret, hands down. I am easily consumed by work I love, but eventually all the joy and love I have gets sucked dry and I'm left burnt out, angry, and useless. Society insists success only comes from hard work, sacrifice, and hustle. But that isn't an option for me anymore. Middle age has taught me I will not survive another burnout. I wanted my experience with Stephanie Danger to be different. I loved her and me too much to do us and our relationship wrong. And so six months before her birth, when Stephanie Danger was just an idea, I took us on a retreat to a tiny house not far away. Stephanie Danger and I were going to practice doing work with ease and use it as our model moving forward. I needed this physical experience away from my regular life and ingrained habits to help me believe work and life could be done differently. Was it possible? Can success come from ease and balance between work, rest, and play? I know old habits and beliefs are hard to change, but I want to believe the answer is yes. Those five regrets are going to be my guide to live a life so when I die, I won't have any regrets. The more I can wake up calm and rested, the easier it is to honor my true self. It gives me the energy I need to be brave and lead with curiosity, joy, and trust instead of fear and doubt. I love the idea of unhurried work days with lots of time for rest and play. No deadlines, just an honoring of the pace my body wants to move at. Hmm. It feels so indulgent to speak this out loud. Going slow, taking my time, that's not something I'm very good at. But getting away from my routine and practicing in the serene environment of this tiny house helps. Being languid in the creation of Stephanie Danger allows space for her to speak to me and tell me what she wants to become. You know, it's scary when you don't have a lot of real world examples validating how you want to live and work. I am also, by the way, pissed at society. It has a habit of tricking us into believing things that don't actually serve us. I created Stephanie Danger to serve as an alter ego for middle-aged women, but she's my alter ego too. She encourages me, and I hope some of you, to rebel against rules we never actually agreed to. It's so funny to be scared of trying to take care of yourself and do life slower. I I mean, I guess the fear comes because it's hard to believe slow living and prosperity can coexist. I'm also scared because what if I succeed? 
I mean, what will I do with all the time and space I've made for myself? It will require I let go of a self-image where I measure my worth by how busy I am. The thing I lose most from working so much is friendship. I want to stay more connected with humans. It's an interesting challenge when you're a sensitive introvert like me, but I am so aware of the value of community. I've come to realize there are unconventional friends too. Nature being number one. Yes. I receive so much guidance, joy, and connection from my interaction with Mother Nature. So, so far, I saw two birds fighting as I was struggling with pondering the old version of me that tends to be a workaholic and the new version of me that wants balance. And I thought those two birds are reflective of the two parts, versions of me. Then I saw four coyotes. I'd heard them howling. And then like 10 minutes later, I saw them trotting along a street down below me. (laughs) So when I've seen coyotes, I looked up the symbolism for them and they're known as the trickster. Every time I see them, it's the universe telling me to lighten up. This work retreat was surprisingly easeful. I learned to dance between doing some work and then relaxing and playing. I realized that when I have less of a vice grip on my days, things can unfold organically and still be productive. You start to realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm taken care of even when I go slow. Actually, especially when I go slow. My biggest lesson from our days at the tiny house was to lead with pleasure by being curious, open, and playful. It's been a year since we went away. I've stumbled a lot. That old voice telling me I have to work long and hard and get everything done now in order to succeed. Yep, she shows up pretty often. It doesn't help that the learning curve is steep when starting something new, but I am doing better than I ever have in the past. And so I give myself grace. I use the memory of this retreat to reconnect with how good it feels to flow. I gotta tell you, when you're out in in nature like this and it's getting dusk, it's kind of scary because You know, it's gonna be dark in a minute and you're out somewhere where there's no lights and wildlife, but it really heightens your sense of aliveness, like in a healthy way. just stop and listen I was in such a shitty mood like two days ago love you